Okay. So the, one of the features that would be very different in Shaka Zulu is that we are presented with a thinking, calculating, highly intelligent leadership figure, someone who's able to deal with whites in their own terms, speak white language even, and understand fundamentally where they're coming from and how they might, might impact on Zulu society. And a leader who's able to plan a Zulu future that takes cognizance of that. And another difference is that Shaka Zulu takes the viewer deeply into Zulu society in the way that none of the other earlier films ever do. If you see Zulus, you see them coming out, as it were, of Zululand to attack whites. Occasionally you might have a, a small shot that takes you into the planning meeting of a battle or something that shows you a, a, a dilemma that, that might affect the battle. But that's very limited. In Shaka Zulu, you go deep into Zulu society, into Zulu homes, into the royal residences. You see domestic life. You see, you see the emotions of Zulu people. You see um, lovers, friends, enemies, all those sorts of things. So in that sense, it's very different. And I think in some senses, you begin, in a way that perhaps you don't in the earlier, earlier films about Zulus, you start to recognize Zulu people as people. But of course, at the same time, it's a qualified humanity. It's a different humanity. It's very much other. And under cer certain circumstances, it can be a frightening other. And I think what the film, what Shaka Zulu tries to do is to describe the kinds of circumstances where an interaction or an, a gaining access to that society can be comfortable and a situation in which it could be disastrous. 